Hello, everybody. Welcome to BlizzCon Line. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, my name is Andrea Toyas. I'm the Senior Casting and Voice Director at Blizzard, a job that I love very, very much. And I can't even begin to tell you how absolutely thrilled I am to be here with you today to still bring voice actor panels to you despite the madness of the world. I've got some amazing, amazing, amazing friends with me. So hopefully the camera will show you that we've brought together some of our favorite actors from World of Warcraft. So if you're at home, I want you to clap right now because I am thrilled beyond measure to have these great people with me. I mean, I haven't seen, we were like wild puppies before the shoot started because I haven't seen my people in so long. I just was overwhelmed with tears and joy. And I think for all of us, we haven't seen each other in a year. Yeah. And so we've all been heavily COVID tested. We've been following protocols so we could be here today to bring this love and this joy to you. Welcome to the World of Warcraft voice actor panel. We're calling this Voices of the Afterlife so we can really dive into Shadowlands and share the great work we've done. So yay for us. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining us. I think we're gonna have a great time. So I think we'll just start with some introductions to show you all my great friends that are here. I want to bite them and chew them and hold them so bad. <laughs> so I might have done an illegal hug. I don't know, maybe. I'm not going to admit to it. But I'm just going to start. Um, I've got my wonderful, delicious, amazing friend, Max Middleman. He plays Aralon in the gorgeous uh, Ardenweald piece and in game. So Max, these are our tribe. Tribe, this is Max. Hi, everyone. Yes. Hi. Um, next to Max, I've got the one and only Sire Denathrius, also known as Ray Chase. Ray Chase, this is our tribe. Tribe, this is Ray. Hi, guys. Um, one of my favorite women on the whole planet, Aww. and I so deeply mean that. My sister. The fabulous Deborah Wilson, who plays Draka. Yeah. So everybody. Hey, fam. Yeah. Hey, fam. <laughs> hey, World of Warcraft fam. Oh, my god. It's my girl. I love her. Um, we have the fabulous. We couldn't, Steve and I talked, we couldn't have a panel about the afterlife without our Loa of Death, Buon Samdi, Alex Desaire. So there he is right oh, there, hey. Alex What's Tribe, up, Tribe, Alex. How you doing, Tribe? Yes. Good to see you again. Again. And of course, we couldn't talk Shadowlands. There's no way we could do Shadowlands without our fabulous, most beloved, our king, our Anduin Wren, also known as Josh Keaton. Josh, Thank you very much. it's our people. What's up, people? Yeah. Good to see everybody. And then, none of this would be possible without our fearless leader, our lead narrative designer, who I also like to call Cuddles. He likes it when I call him Cuddles. <laughs> this is Steve Denuser, lead narrative designer. Steve, it's our people, of course. Hey, everybody. It's yes. awesome to be here with you. Yes. Let's just clap for ourselves since there's, yes. no, there's nobody here. <laughs> and let's clap for the fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All of you. I know. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's weird. I. BlizzCon, and Steve and I always talk about this, BlizzCon to me is better than Christmas. It's, 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 it's really, for all of us who've been, it's better than Christmas, and it felt so weird. I don't know how you guys were, but it felt really weird to not be there with you. So we're really gonna hang out and chat and, and just talk life, talk game, and talk about everything we've been through in the last year, because even though we couldn't be with you in Anaheim, we wanna be with you in here in spirit. So that's what we're gonna do today. And hopefully the camera's getting our, what do you guys think about the set, right? It's, rid it's ridiculous. It's so <laughs> awesome. Can well, I move in? I know. <laughs> well, I told them like now, just so you guys can get this on camera, every year the voice actor stage better look like this or I'm not doing <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, so yeah, welcome. I love you. I'm so happy to be here. I want to talk to Steve first, because Steve and I talked a little bit. You know, this is the first game that Blizzard did in the pandemic, right? I mean, I think March 13th, uh, we got the call that we were all going to work from home. There's the call now. Yes. <laughs> we're going to work from home, and thus we had to figure out, we have to make Shadowlands happen from home. I think at that point we had very little content recorded. Um, and so we did. So Steve... I want to talk to you because I haven't seen you. We've only talked a little bit in sessions. It's the first time I've seen Cuddles. I know. So Cuddles, what was it like having to make this game <laughs> and write this game about the afterlife and these crazy heavy topics during a pandemic? I mean, for you personally, this is tough. Well, it, it was tough. And it was a really scary time at first because yeah. when, when this started happening, we didn't know if we could have voices. We didn't know, know. if we could pull it off yeah. even. Uh, and we had very frank conversations like, does this, is this going to be a silent expansion, you know, or, hmm. or very minimal? And, and we talked about like, well, could we, you know, go back later after things are normal and, re and record it then and put the stuff in? And, and, you know, we 
over the, the past few expansions especially, voice acting has just, you, we've taken it to new levels and it's become such an important part of the game and there's been so many memorable performances. And at the end of the day, we just, we decided we had to find a way. We had to find a way to make it work. And thanks to our amazing sound team, uh, our amazing engineers, um, we somehow pulled it together and once again, executed at a, at a really high level. And all the new actors who came in who've never been in WoW before, to have to, to, to bring everybody in and say, hey, you know, this is this afterlife that we're, we're, we're gonna be laying out there for our fans. It was a huge undertaking, but um, just super proud of the way that everyone came together and showed such commitment to this. Yeah. We knew we wanted to do the right thing for the game. Uh, and it was amazing. Yeah, I, we really did have a talk at a certain point. I remember having a conversation either with you or WoW leadership, I forget, but Maybe we have to ship this game with no VO because we didn't know. But before we even go into that, I mean, I know I, for myself I felt this way. To have to be creative when I was feeling down and blue and having to, to deliver and create was very difficult. So before we even get into the game, I want to know how all of you are doing. You know, 2020 was hard. And, and from that, I want to segue into what it's like to create under a pandemic from your closet at home when by yourself and you're scared about the world melting down. So before we even get into that, I had a rough year, man. Summer. Summer almost broke me. I had some dark days, and I'm just wondering how you guys, how you got through it. How you doing? How's everybody? I'm I'm doing okay. Um, you got the wild COVID hair. Yeah, I got the wild COVID amazing. hair. I, I've gained uh, gained yes, a few pounds. Uh, <laughs> More to cuddle. A lot, lot of junk food. <laughs> yes. Lot of uh, lot, lot of uh, food food delivery and picking up stuff and Great. eating whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, the, I have two two young kids. They're both in school, so they've been doing their their Zoom classrooms and. And that's, that's been kind of just the way it's been for the last year is like having two Zoom sessions going there and then having one for <laughs> recording VO for me. So there's like three Zoom sessions going pretty much all day long. Mm. Um, but otherwise it hasn't been too bad. I mean, I've always been kind of an introvert anyway. So right. like just being at home has been okay. Um, I do really miss, like I actually didn't really realize until today how much I missed the human contact because I saw Max and I was like, What's up, man? And I saw Alex, I was, and I saw Deborah, and, and I just met Ray. And um, it, it, it just, that's when you really start to realize how much you miss that human connection when you, when you have a little taste of it. And, um, and, and yeah, so I mean, that's, that's how it's been for me. But um, funnily enough, I, I got more, I, I got back into World of Warcraft during the pandemic. Good to hear. So I started playing uh, BFA again, and I started doing old content, okay. and, uh, and, and then now playing Shadowlands. So that's, that's kind of been a cool, um, social thing for me to do, um, just to go and, and feel like I'm getting out somewhere mm -hmm. and, and, and questing and doing things with other people. And, and that's, that's been kind of nice for my sanity. Yes, the World of Warcraft saved you, that's yes. what I'm hearing. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I feel like half the reason I do voiceover is because there's the creative part of it, but there's also the being able to see people. So that was, that's really been tough for me, mm -hmm. even though it's been nice that I get to continue to record from my home studio, which is just my walk-in closet, um, it's still, I still am missing such a huge component, which is going in and having that interaction. Mm -hmm. And as, as much of an introvert as I am, like Josh, I still, I, I realized in uh, quarantine just how much I miss getting to see people face to face. And like the session we had, it, it's so much, um, it's so much easier to sort of execute, you know, your vision and, and sort of come together collaboratively when we're all in the same room. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and you know, that's, I miss that. But Netflix has been nice. <laughs> and um, Delivery. Yes. And uh, Schitt's Creek. Yes, and, great show. Uh, Queen's Gambit. Yes, so yes. Good. So you're um, doing okay, you held steady. I'm doing okay, I have ups and downs, but. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to focus on what I have to be grateful for. Absolutely. Because when I'm feeling the most depressed, I think about all the things that I, you know, that I do have. Yes. So. I feel like I'm never going to take a hug for granted again. I mean, yeah. I, I'll, yep. I mean, when I do sneak in a rogue hug every once in a while, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, it's so much more meaningful now. I feel like I'll never take human touch for granted again, you know? Okay. And to your point, focusing on gratitude because yeah. there's some dark days, man, and then you just got to go, okay, you know what? Just sit down and calm down and eat some potato chips. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Um, what about you guys? Alex? I think we were saying before, too, it's been interesting with this whole time that we're living in. It's like, you know, I'll have a couple of days where I'm, I'm on point. We're good. We're good. And then the next day I'm like, oh, this sucks. This sucks. 
and then I'll get back to being good. And it's an interesting thing because I thought it was just me until I talked to my friends. They're like, mm -hmm. no, that's happening to me as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the odd thing about this whole time is as alone as we feel, we're not alone because mm -hmm. everybody seems to be going through the same thing. And it, this is, I'll honestly say, I've been searching for silver linings everywhere mm -hmm. and I've been finding them everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you guys, have you guys reached out to people you haven't talked to? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. For yeah. years? Yes. <sighs> now talk about, you know, finding some light and some dark. There it is right there. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I'm grateful for that and that golf is a social distance sport. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or rather game, because if you can smoke while you're doing it, it's a game. Right. Um, so no, I'm, I'm really grateful. It's yeah. like really finding the little things yeah. and, and the fact that we get to do this. The fact that we're here right oh, now. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like when we all got here, like I said earlier, we went wild like little puppies because yeah how lucky we are to be here right now. And when I say we, I don't just mean us, I mean all of you at home. I want you to know that for all of us, feel we are, you're, we're holding you in our hearts, you're here with us right now. So we're all, we all get to do this right now. Uh, Ray, Deborah, how are you guys, how are you holding steady? Um, the interesting thing for me is, uh, I don't have children and I'm not married. So the complexities of having a family, the complexities of being married, and, 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 and holding those relationships in a different space, mm -hmm. uh, I, I get why people go like, it's driving me mad or, or all these things. But I've always been this person who is living her first childhood, not her second, <laughs> but at my age, living my first childhood. And I've never let that go because I've been honored and privileged to be married but divorced, have my own space, pretty much for a very long time and have scorpions and tarantulas and <laughs> fish and a dog and do whatever I want and get tattooed and pierced. So there was always this sense of privilege uh, um, of my own that I've created for myself. And as a kid, I was always that homebody. I never considered myself by myself, but with myself. And the darker stuff for me was prior to any of this in years. It was a dark descent in my own personal mm -hmm. life for many other reasons. And I'm talking very, very dark where it was rock bottom. And because I had hit such powerful, dark rock bottoms, I knew that I would never go there again. And it was important for me to stay, to stay spiritually grounded because I knew that Everything has a rise and an emergence and everything happens for a reason and everything has to be spilled out to examine and look so that we can discern and disseminate the make and measure of who we are in the center of it all. Mm -hmm. So when we're privileged and when we're in our bubbles, everything is comfortable and we find that balance no matter what is teetering in our life. But when something like this happens, it really calls upon us to bring ourselves into a different type of light mm -hmm. and to accept our darkness because that's how we transmute it into light. Mm -hmm. You know, the light is just not there. The light is already within you, but it's okay. And, and, and giving yourself the opportunity to say, you know what, it's okay that I feel this mm -hmm. way. It's okay that I'm going through this. I'm fine with this because I'm gonna use this to transmute it into something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to do that prior to any of this in such a dark descent in my life that I, I was prepared. And in the process of being prepared, the one thing I wanted to not lose control of, even though I was out of control of a lot of things in the world and it was happening, is I was always gonna be in control of my compassion, mm -hmm. my kindness. I was always gonna be in control of calling the people I love and say, hey, I haven't called you in a while, and the reason I'm calling you is because of this pandemic. And I wanna know how you are, and I haven't spoken to you in a while, and thank goodness for Zoom, and thank goodness for yep. FaceTime. And being able to go, all of those things I can now use in such a powerful way to connect, because I was making sure that I stayed connected and boltered to, to myself, to my higher mm -hmm. self. But it took me, like I said, uh, uh, not so much the pandemic for that to happen, but stuff prior yep. to that, 
that was so dark that I just knew I could never go back there again. So when this dark happened, I thought more of other people who have families, yeah. who have friends, who've lost jobs, who've lost brothers and sisters and family members, who are suffering right now, who are in pain, who don't want to hear the happy side of my own life. <laughs> but I want to be able to go compassionate wise, this ain't about me. Mm -hmm. This is about you sharing where you are so I can step into your shoes and ask you, how can I serve you even from a distance? Yeah. What kind of love can I give from you from mm -hmm. a distance? Mm -hmm. What can we share so that you can talk about and completely vomit out everything you need to that's going on in your personal yeah. life so that you go, I feel better. Now let's talk about the yeah. fun yeah. for a moment yeah. and let's get back to telling each other how much we love each other. Yeah, and I, amen. And I mean, yeah. that's why, I, this sounds like a joke. It's not, there's times, I don't know if I've told you, I'll have a bad day and I'm not kidding. I go, what would Deborah do right now? I'm not even <laughs> kidding. I'm not, because I feel like I, it's easy to go to this kind of, dark place but you are such a bastion of light and power in this world and that's a great example of it and i really mean that because you see things differently in a way that reminds us how to be human so i think that one of the benefits of this pandemic is slowing us down and connecting us in ways that we we've in some ways we forgot how to be connected we're so distracted with yeah. this and that and now it's slowed us down to stay connected absolutely because you know what this is only reflective of the viruses that we haven't killed absolutely killed within ourselves i know that's our so complacency true. yes all our of it fear all of the things that we haven't grown within ourselves yeah. our hatred yeah. because this is not just about the pandemic the black lives matter movement yeah. the rise of the lgbtq community yeah. people who are choosing to really experience and express their authentic self without yeah. the fear of violence yes. how and living and this is the 21st century we're talking about yeah. where people are still being killed i know for a belief system i know and for who they truly are to live their authentic selves yeah and because of that there are so many viruses that we have to look at in ourselves yes. that we go what what am I doing in the center of this? Yeah, Who am true. I in the center it's of this? True. What am I contributing to the center? All these things to ask ourselves. Yeah. It's a hard act to follow, uh, Steve and Ray. I'm sorry, but I don't have to go What else can we do? I put a lot of video games. So, this so Ray, how, uh, right wrong. Yeah, yeah. Was really Ray, how have you survived? <laughs> so, how have you been doing, Ray? Uh, Ray also has the best COVID hair. I would kill for that. Thank you. So, Ray, how have you been doing? You're supposed to be sitting in the Sardinathrius pose, by the way. I'm. It just happened to be that I ended up getting the longest seat in the room. Uh, so how have you survived all this? Are you uh, doing all right? Well, we had a we had an odd thing. We got married. Uh, we had a very poorly <laughs> congratulations. We had a very poorly timed wedding. It was March 21st of last year, and it was uh, it was originally like a 50 person wedding, and then the week before it was oh we can't gather in groups of more than oh. 20. It's now a 20 person wedding, and then it was oh five, and then at the very end it was in our backyard. Uh, and uh, two people showed up. Oh, uh, just her parents. but yeah, so yeah. special. It was really, no, it, was, yeah. it ended up being special and we got the cake all to ourselves. Uh, <laughs> it ended up being okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you made it through all right. That's lovely, so, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah, right, wonderful, here. that's great. It's nice these things, that, it, it's like I feel like these things that happen to us mean more than just a blur and a timeline. Now every little thing matters. Steve, what about you? How are you doing? Because you had to keep yourself healthy and then write a, a game about the afterlife. So, A, how are you? Then talk about, start there. How yeah, are you? How are you I'm, doing? I'm, you know, doing pretty good. Like everybody else, there's, yeah. there's ups and downs. But it's, you know, the important thing to remember is that none of this is a, an equation to be solved. Like, right. you don't just figure it out and go, oh, okay, I'm good now. It's fine to have those ups and downs, yeah. to have good days and bad days. Yeah. That's that's natural. And just so. weather the storm. And just weather the storm yeah. and just, you know, keep keep pushing forward. Yeah. But So yeah. what was it like then? It was just so weird that we're talking this game Shadowlands and, and the themes of it while there's a pandemic mm. going on. So did you have to meet with a team to kind of go, OK, we're going to go into this dark place while the world is kind of dark. What was that creative process like? Well, it was, you know, we, we already had things underway. These expansions take so long yeah. to, you know, from, from first conception to agreeing upon, you know, the basic ideas to developing those out. So everybody knew what we were going to be doing. Everybody was already kind of bought into that. Um, but, you know, we, the, the crazy thing is that so much of my job, uh, like I have two major phases of it and, 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 the, the first phase is like getting people together and jamming on ideas and sharing you know, like you know, story ideas and going back and forth and kind of honing out so those best ideas rise to the top. Um, and that's a very, it's always been a very in-person thing. It's people gathered jamming around, together. we're all sitting around a table, we're all jamming on stuff and just, just feeding off one another's energy and that face-to-face -face connection was super important to that. And then another part of my job is, you know, after those ideas get distilled down is kind of like, 
preaching it to other people, mm -hmm. like going to different groups, to the engineers, to the sound team, to whomever, and saying, this is what we're doing, and getting all excited about it. Again, a very face-to-face -face thing, and feeding off people's energies and seeing how they're reacting to, like, you know, what are they raising their eyebrows at? What are they nodding to? You know, all those kinds of cues that are so important in this, in this physical space. And when we, when we first all went home, and, you know, we didn't know how long it would be for, will it be for a couple weeks, for a month, for, you know, who knows? Um, I remember that first week, the, we started having Zoom meetings and stuff like that, and I just thought, oh my God, this is not going to work. I'm I'm a failure. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it. This is this is where the you know the 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 the, the rug gets pulled out, yep. and and this is people figure me out now that I can't do this. And that first week was really hard, and I questioned myself, and I just doubted whether we could do this mm -hmm. successfully. And then the second week, it got a little easier and started making those connections. And some of those meetings were like, man, that was really good. Like, had some of that same energy. And by the third week, I didn't have any doubts anymore. Mm -hmm. I knew that we could do it. Wow. I knew it would take longer. I knew that it would be harder and we would have those ups and downs and we'd have fits and starts and all that sort of thing. But I, from that point on, I never questioned that we would make something great. Yes, that's great. Uh, because even through the screens and through the wires and this distance and everything, I still felt that connection yeah. to the people that I'm in the trenches with every day. And we carried that forth from the game team to these acting mm -hmm. sessions, the voice sessions, and just that energy and that power and that trust mm -hmm. was super important. And that's what got us through. Yeah, I think that's beautifully said. I feel like for myself and probably all of you, but for Steve and I working at Blizzard on this game, it's like a mission, a goal. You know, we knew we had something bigger to work on it. And Rather than there's sometimes I didn't want to get out of bed and I didn't, but then there's days when I'm like, we got to get up, we got to do this game, we got to commit. So even though we were distant because Blizzard very much is a tribe, it's, it's really palpable. But I think to your point, we, we, there was something greater than ourselves that kept us going. Yeah. And was it, I mean, these are some dark tones in this game. I mean, did that come up? I mean, that's, you, have to, you had to write some heavy content. It is, but the, you know, I, I think of Shadowlands as a very optimistic expansion. Yeah, too, I want, yeah because, what, what's your take on the game? I want to hear. Yeah, I mean, when it was great to have essentially a blank canvas to think about what does the afterlife for World of Warcraft mean? We've gone to all these crazy places. We've gone to hidden places on Azeroth. We've gone to other worlds, time whiminess, all that sort of stuff. Um, and this was a, a chance to go to this entirely different reality, basically. Um, that had only been hinted at before. We'd only talked about Shadowlands as a, as a concept, and we'd had some characters like Bonsamdi who had given us little footholds and dipped our toes into the realm of death before, but we had never fully immersed ourselves into it. And one of the, one of the things that I, I kind of fixated on early on was this idea that <clears throat> humans, we think of death, we think of that as an ending, but for the Shadowlands, Death is just a beginning. Death is a source of energy. Death is a source of existence for all these people. And there's lines in game where some of the characters who, who exist in the Shadowlands, you know, even though they are of death, I always say it's death with a capital D, death as an energy, death as a force. Death as an energy, that's heavy. Death is a, is a kind of magic that animates all of these things. So the irony is that even in this, this realm of supposed death, things are very much alive and there's characters there, people that you make connections with as, as many of the characters here uh, on this very panel, um, players feel just as real a connection to someone like Aralon, yes. or when they're in the raid against Sire Denathrius <laughs> and all the things that he said. Like, those are real connections, and it doesn't matter that this is an afterlife setting, it's still World of Warcraft. And at the end of the day, that's what people come back to and are drawn to. Absolutely. And I really want to talk about all the work that our actors did, but I want you to talk about one thing you were talking about before the cameras rolled, and that was, we were saying Josh is a big WoW player, in case you guys don't know. I mean, you can talk WoW probably more than Steve. Oh, uh, he's after my job. We yeah, all know totally. that. Well, we don't really need you anymore. He's got better hair. Yeah, so that's I know. Say. He's got um, hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, we were talking, you were saying how in uh, Shadowlands, and I know from having to cast a million races, that we have more races than ever. And I want you to talk about how you approached writing it with all the realms and the post-it notes and the, because that's bananas. I want to know how you got from that crazy writing process to these great people here today. Yeah, well, it, it is, you know, creating this is, is no one person's job, right. first of all, to make that clear. Like, I work with Speak tremendous people, people. Yes. yes. Um, we have tremendous designers and artists and engineers and just a whole team that lives and breathes this world and this story. So everything I do is a collaboration. I don't do anything on my own. Yes. Um, so we lift each other up and when people have, have good days, they help everyone and when they have bad days, then they lean on other people and, and that's, that's super important. But you know, for my part of it, I, I, I always try to 
to focus on the big picture and like, what does Shadowlands mean? And what are the themes that we're gonna be exploring as we're telling these stories? And so I, I literally mapped out this cork board that uh, you know, once we had settled on what our, what our realms would be, the realms of death, uh, Revendreth and Ardenweald and, and Bastion and Maldraxxus and the Maw, I, I, I started making little notes about what, what, are, what words are associated with these places. So uh, places like Revendreth, that was about pride, mm. um, but also about redemption in, in ways and sin and arrogance, but, but, but also finding a, a, a path to pay for those sins. Mm. Uh, Maldraxxus was about struggle, it was about chaos, it was about rising up a ladder to prove yourself. There are good qualities in that as well. And so it was about finding all of those themes for all of these different places. And then I could look at that and see how those, a theme in Bastion connected to a theme in Maldraxxus. And then that's a great fodder for a quest designer. You go in and say, oh, I can build a line that takes me from this place to this place. And then now I have characters that have something in common that mm -hmm. they can interact. So places that on the surface look very different from one another mm -hmm. actually have a lot of threads mm -hmm. connecting them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the hallmarks of WoW is that kind of storytelling where there's so many threads that are connecting characters and connecting points in time and connecting places. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes it feel like a, a, a lived in world. And we wanted that for the Shadowlands as well. I love, I was teasing Steve saying that he probably looked like a serial killer with his little, the, no, no, it's the cops who do that with the board, yeah. the thread and the yarn and <laughs> mapping it all you, with, it with crazy more, scribbles yeah, over the wall. Good, I, I wish I could see a picture of your house during, during Shadowlands, just of all these crazy notes and, and things. Yeah. Okay, so. Revendreth was sin and purging. Maldrax was, was kind of survival. Ardenweald? Ardenweald is about renewal. It's okay, about, renewal. There's, there's a side to it that is sleep and restoration. Yes. Um, but then there's a part of waking up too. It's part of a cycle. Yes. Uh, that's, the, that's the key thing about Revendreth. It plays a unique part in the Shadowlands yes. because it is where life and death intersect. Yes. And uh, there's a lot of, we're gonna be exploring that in, in that relationship in future content as well, because it's, it is a, a key thing that death doesn't stand on its own. Death and life are intertwined, both for our players' characters, who are living mortals, you know, traversing the realms yes. of death, but also for these forces that are in this realm of death themselves. They know that they have this connection to this other force, life with a capital L, if you will. It's just so powerful to talk about during these crazy times, right? But the million dollar question for me, which I was teasing you about, but I want an answer. If you die in the afterlife, you're double dead? What are you? I just want Listen, to clarify. The answer is you different die in the depending afterlife. on if like a you're a, a, a more living more. Let's just not go into Okay. That. Well, <laughs> that's so, that's so, can, you can you work on that Come for on. me? I need you to work on that I'm for me. I'm happy to answer it for I love when I see the tweets going, yo, I'm dead in the afterlife. Does that mean I'm double dead? Double you know, dead. Double, <laughs> double dead. If you, if you want the real answer, you know, it's our player characters. Like, uh, you know, as Josh knows well, when, when they die, something nudges them back to life, okay. some force, some tether, some okay. connection. And that is because our, our heroes, our player characters are tied to the life yeah. force of Azeroth itself. Yeah. And it's, it's that connection that keeps them going, even when the odds are against them. It's really beautiful. I mean, I mean it's, it's just really beautiful how what you're talking about is a video game, yes, but so much of it can apply to real life and death and the connections and death mm -hmm. that stay with us and push us forward. That's, what's, that's what was so heavy in these moments of recording Shadowlands. I myself, we've had several sessions, many sessions I would argue, that really brought us to tears, that were heavy, that were intense and all of that. So I think that's a great segue. I'm gonna kind of go around for our fans at home. I'm gonna to talk to each actor about their roles. We've got some great footage of everything they did because we really did have some magical moments, many magical moments in the recording of Shadowlands, I would say. And one of the first that I can recall is my beautiful Aralon in the Ardenweald piece. I mean, I gotta tell you, our cinematic director, Mark Messenger, that was his piece, and I told you this, Mark had to leave Max's session when we recorded for Ardenweald because he was crying so much he had to walk out of the booth. Because even when I watch it now, I've seen you, I've directed you in that piece and I've seen the piece and it still gets me. Yeah. So I remember that day like it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, let's actually, let's watch some footage of it first so we can remind everybody. Then I want to talk to you about it because it's, it's just delight, it's just poetry. Great. So we're going to see our Erlon in the Ardenweald piece. One last time, you serve the wilds. You will not be forgotten. Forgive me, friend. I 
I will hunt for you, my queen. For Ardenweald, and for the souls we can yet save. I swear it. I swear it. It oh. just gets you, right? It just... I can't make it through that piece. And to, you know, we recorded this before COVID hit. Mm. And watching it now, I feel like I see it even deeper and more profoundly yeah. because, you know, I lost my 19-year-old cat last Christmas. And when I, it, every time I watch it, I think, or of any loss, of any loss that we have and the grief yet beauty in it. So do you remember that? I remember that day. I do, yesterday. I do. It's such a heartbreaking story. By the way, something I, I just noticed is that the, the Winter Queen gets teary-eyed in this in yes. the visual, yes. which is like, whoa, you know, for, for her to... Um, my, mo my mom, actually, when she watched this, she, n she never cries at, at animated <gasps> stuff, right? But she got, she called me and she was like, I just watched your... <laughs> I was like, yes! <laughs> um, so, uh, but it's a heartbreaking thing that he has to go through. Yes. Um, he's sworn this oath to protect his grove, these souls, and he's given a choice yeah. uh, where he can continue to protect the one soul that's left or he can serve the greater good. He can sacrifice this soul yeah. for the greater good and he chooses the greater good. And it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a Sophie's choice. It's Absolutely. just so heartbreaking. Yes. Um, but I remember going into that session, I was in a weird creative rut in my life, in my acting career. And which can happen to Absolutely. all creative people. It can happen to writers, it can happen to singers and musicians and dancers and everybody. Um, so I, I was in that place where I felt like I was doing the same thing sort of over and over and over again. And rarely do you get to work on something that ha is so filled uh, with this, it's so well written, it's got so much for you to grasp mm -hmm. as an actor. The lore is so, there's so much there. And um, I remember leaving that session feeling the complete opposite going into it. I, I just, I felt so fulfilled. And I, I told you, I was like, it was, it was such an honor to be able to do that. And you only get to really do this kind of thing with video games, I feel like, for, for voice acting. Um, or it's rare that you get to do it with other forms of, of voice acting. So um, I was just so thrilled, I'm so thrilled. And like, part of the reason that like I said, that I'm able to, to feel this way is because the writing is so good. Mm -hmm. Like I can go in and I don't know about you guys when you're creating a character, when you're auditioning for a character, I, I latch on to like adjectives because it's the easiest thing to, to, to use. So for Aralon, that's um, he's, he's loyal, he's dedicated, mm -hmm. he's compassionate, mm -hmm. he's strong-willed. Mm -hmm. And all these things create like one layer of a character, mm -hmm. but having the writing be so rich when you mm -hmm. get to the session and you learn these other things about the world and the character and how he relates and these threads that connect it adds a whole nother yes. layer and i think that's what you need if you want a character to be compelling mm -hmm. so ah uh, it's so it's just such a joy as an actor to be able to work on this kind yes. of thing and i remember talking to you in the kitchen that day because we got a lot of auditions in for Aralon and yours was just if we had used your audition for the piece it would have been perfect but and we talked about your preparation like you put work maybe like you're saying the adjective so what for a character like Aralon what how did you prepare to audition because your audition was perfect do you remember what you did thank you uh i yeah so i it's, it's with an audition it's tough you there was a an image in the yes. audition i remember it said something like um a picture is so helpful to see a picture. I don't even think it was finished. Right, it that's wasn't correct. The real thing, but it was—it's very helpful to have a picture and sort of the, mm -hmm. the adjectives together. Um, the there was a little backstory, mm -hmm. so I could latch onto that as well. Um, but you're just—you're taking big swings, mm -hmm. so you know I don't really have the answers mm -hmm. when I'm in the audition. So I—I I took some swings, mm -hmm. and luckily, it was great. yeah, it worked. And for me, I think Erlon and Steve. What do you think? I feel like with Erlon, there's such a juxtaposition of raw vulnerability, and and delicacy, but yeah. yet power and strength and courage. So, so for me, Erlon's one of my favorites because he does balance out those two things. Is that how you perceive Erlon? I mean, he's just such a magnificent character. Yeah, and and you know, for people who a little insight into our process. The, typically the way that it works is we'll write up on the on the our side, we'll write up a, like a casting sheet. 
for. This is what, who the character is, and this is what role it's going to play in the game, and this is what is important about it, and we give that to you. And then uh, you'll usually doctor it up so that you're not revealing any of our right. secrets in the lore deep dive and stuff. Some but you're, speak into yeah, it. Yeah, you're giving the actors what they need to be able to, to pull from that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, those were the things that were, that were super important about yeah. Erlon. And then you deliver a batch of auditions, and we listen to them mm -hmm. together, and, and I give you my thoughts mm -hmm. on those. And, like, and, know everything you tell me. Yeah, well, yes, right, exactly. But, but we find what that core is, yeah. and, like, what are the things that stand out about this audition that really hit home for that character? Yeah. And that was the thing. It, it was Erlon needed to be sincere. He needed yeah. to be someone that you could tell he cared about yeah. what he did. And so that was what was so crucial about that yeah. performance and it just nailed it perfectly. I've, I've seen that uh, cinematic from, uh, because it was made by our story and franchise team. And, but I'm, I'm in the room from like the first script and going over the notes and everything and, and storyboards to like early animatic to you know, the art pieces coming in, temp voiceover and all that kind of stuff. Every time I cried with that, like every time I could see it. And then when the final performance came in and the music came in, freaking lost it I know. because it was just so perfectly done it yeah. just brought everything together and i'm going to tell you something i didn't tell you whenever i sent the casting doc out i listened to everything and i gave every, everybody a chance for sure but i knew it had to be you because uh -huh. because i always look for actors all of you here to me represent i always look successful casting is when the person themselves really connects with the character and you are so full of love and light and beauty and strength and endurance and power so i knew that your heart would come through so powerfully, and it did. Thank so you. I love you so much. I, I, Aralon was such a beautiful piece, and I, I treasure it, that session, so much. It's so. one of my favorite things yes. that I've ever done. Yes, it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, great. Well, so happy to have you here. Thank you. Um, so, of course, that leads us to Sire Denathrius, and I love that I said I look for actors who connect to their character. So pure clearly, evil. A pure <laughs> evil. When I think about Ray Chase, it's pure evil. Yeah. I've known him for a long time, and it, I can confirm. Pure yeah, evil. Pure evil. menacing evil. Not, a, not nothing. So, but good looking. Yeah, very <laughs> great hair. Great yes. hair. Something, something, something. Someone evil would say. <laughs> <laughs> so before we talk to you, I, I mean, this Denathrius piece, I could just all of your pieces, I could watch over and over. But Denathrius, what a nasty person to love. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, let's watch uh, the lovely uh, Revendreth piece. Let's all uh, watch that. To the good people of Revendreth. It is with optimism that I address you today. Though these are challenging times. Firstly, I assure you that our holy mission to help the most violent and wicked souls atone for their sins is and always will be our utmost priority. Our rituals are effective. Our judgment keen but fair. We, Venthyr, remain committed to bringing eventual redemption to all who desire it. It is through your faithful work that even the most evil and prideful beings may ultimately be spared an eternity in the Maw. God, it's Ooh. so good. Wow. It's so good. Wow. Just the juxtaposition of what I saying, know, and I'm like, that voice are. is coming out of this I person. Know. It's yeah. crazy. Wow. That I just, is my natural speaking voice. Yeah. If I were you, I would talk yeah. like that all the damn time at the drive through You name it, I would talk <laughs> like that. But I, again, I remember your session so clearly because I remember we played classical music in your cans. Yes. And you had like a cup of tea. I had and a tea, you, Yes, yeah. and you just so delicately drank the tea. Oh. So talk to us about... I want to know a how did where did where did this where did this voice come from? He's amazing. So tell us where 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 Denathrius came from. Uh, uh, coming from being just <laughs> I just wanted the most. We use that word a lot. Delicious, delicious to talk about this character, but just a nice silky deep voice, and of course it has to be British. Oh. I'm really glad. I'm very thankful to you, Steve, for uh, having giving letting me say Revendreth a lot because it has two R's that I can roll <laughs> Revendreth all the time. Oh it's gosh. so nice. It's <laughs> so. Oh, good. Uh, and I, I, uh, I'm glad uh, Max didn't snipe my story, but we, uh, we both did our, um, our sessions the same week. And we called each other uh, at some point to check in because we were always uh, talking with each other. Uh, and, uh, and we both said at the same time, I had the best session I ever had. And it was, uh, and both of us just said, yeah, it was these for, the, for Warcraft. It was incredible. Uh, just the, just the, the directing, the writing, the characterization. Um, and then, and yeah. And that was another thing you, you, I forgot that 
you do this. I don't think anybody else has done this, where they play music, music. in their cans, and it, it's so... It, it changes it. It's such delight. It, it yeah. changes yeah. everything. Yes. Yes. That's so cool that yeah. there was classical music Oh, yes, playing. it was so It was the music from the trailer, yeah. Yes. It was perfect, and then yeah. you had me drink tea before yeah. saying every single line, yeah. because he's in that drinking uh, anima for, yes. from, from a glass. It was perfect. Yes. Uh, I, I first met you at a casting workshop seven years That's ago. That's hard and to I remember, believe. I remember you saying that... Um, uh, that you always are looking for creative ways of getting performers to to do their job mm -hmm. and um, uh, being able to work on this with all of the cool bells and whistles, the uh, the Andrea Toyas toys, I guess. Uh, <laughs> right. It really, really worked. It was super, super fun. I, I absolutely loved it. It was great. So where did you, this voice, is it just vampire lore? Well, I think for us it was easy because smug politicians you know, it was such such timely content to draw from. I couldn't from. believe it, and this was before COVID. I yes. address you today through these challenging times. Yeah, <laughs> perfect timing. Totally. Mean, it was crazy that uh, uh, so much of of, uh, of real world stuff yes. was reflected in this. It's uh, crazy. The big lie, saying the thing mm -hmm. that uh, the, accusing somebody else of doing mm -hmm. the thing that you are doing, mm -hmm. which is all that speech is. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it was it was uh, it was very timely and interesting. So how do you? Where did you like? Was it thinking about politicians? I think we were thinking about World War. II. To propaganda. I forget what we, what was in, like, how did you think you created him? Like, what would you base him on if you had to kind of piece him together? Oh, man. I mean, big and blue. Yeah. And uh, really uh, just, I don't know. I think that he loves himself yes. more than anything. <laughs> That's why he'll put himself before, uh, you know, he's he's supposed to be in charge of this place. Right. But all he's doing is is uh, farming all of this anima and using it all for himself and mm -hmm. his, his cronies. Um, I think that's really what that character is mm -hmm. about. Uh, and he's got a cool sword <laughs> that he doesn't even have to swing himself. It yes. just goes on its own. I don't know. I just think he's such a well-designed character. He's wonderful. Every time he talks, I think everybody stops because that voice coming out is amazing. Yeah. Um, so I just think you did him beautifully. And I'm just so happy to, to bring you here to celebrate because all the feedback, people went mental over Denathrius because just, <laughs> that, just I don't know, like you luxuriate in your consonants, right? Yes, exactly. It's just yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I do want to point out that Ray did choose the biggest chair for himself in this whole thing. <laughs> we got to it choose our own it, too. it wasn't like a hesitation <laughs> thing. It was just like, no, that's mine. Oh, my throne. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm casting people who connect with their characters a little too well. So yes, uh, yes. no, I have no problem. Oh, we love him. Uh, he's just fantastic. Thank so you. leader of the vampires. Mm -hmm. So it's so great to really celebrate our, our the pieces that we did: Ardenweald, Revendreth, uh, and now Maldraxxus with our fabulous orc queen goddess that is you. Mm -hmm. And I still remember your session. Working with Deborah is magic because Deborah. I will watch Deborah, and she physically, you can watch her. You haven't been to session yet with Deborah. She physically transforms. You just see like, and then it's just Draka. And the power that you bring to her is amazing. So let's watch a little bit of Draka to celebrate your magic, and then we'll come and chat. Okay. In life, I was Draka of the Frostwolf clan, a warrior who gave everything. to protect what mattered most. But I was not done fighting. I am Draka, once of the Frost Wolf clan, now Baroness of the House of the Chosen and most of all, a protector of Maldraxxus. So oh. good. Oh. I tell you, you have such a strong, powerful female character that doesn't mess around. It's so inspiring. And I remember, Deborah, when you were in session recording this piece, I mean, you always stand upright, but I remember you just, the, the power and the steel in your spine when you recorded was, and your eyes were so focused, it was just amazing. So talk about that voice and how you brought her to life and what she means to you, all of that, because she's phenomenal. Um, Draka is, is, is powerful because she's been tortured. Mm. Uh, tortured emotionally, tortured psychologically, tortured by death, tortured by life. Mm -hmm. And as an orc, that has to be used from the deepest part of one's body because 
nothing will ever get solved. It's an evolutionary process of saving and saving again and building your integrity and building your strength and building your character based on all the pain. And so the pain is important because it doesn't overwhelm you as a feminine or female energy. It only empowers you as what most people would see in society would be masculine. Mm -hmm. And it's not masculine, it's feminine energy. Um, and that feminine space that she comes from is the loss of a child. Yes. And so she could either curl up and die, but that's not the York way. Mm -hmm. And she uses that as something to push past the pain, drag it with her into um, missions, drag it with her into the statement of who she is and every experience that will take her on this journey, um, but doesn't use it as a reason or excuse mm -hmm. of anything, mm -hmm. um, just keeps it for herself. It's almost like wearing a talisman mm -hmm. and keeping that talisman inside your clothing. Um, and no one needs to see it and no one needs to know that it's there, but it's close to your body, it's close to your heart. Mm -hmm. And you wear it on the inside, but never on the out. Mm -hmm. I love it. So what part of you do you connect with? Like what part of Deborah do you see? As All the of it. All of it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All of it. And the reason is, is because we're telling uh, uh, their orcs and their demons and their creatures and their characters and their vampires. But it's important for me when I go into a booth to tell um, and transmute the experience in a human story mm -hmm. in terms of why people want to relate. And unless I'm putting something very personal in it, it's going to be a challenge for people to relate. And the, I will miss an aspect of authenticity. And for me personally, I can't afford to miss the authenticity because the story is much greater than me. Mm -hmm. The epic journey that you created for this character um, is a huge responsibility. And in, in taking on that responsibility, I, the part of the luggage that I bring with me, the part of the, 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 the stuff that I have to bring with me is my own personal stuff, whether you know where it's coming from or not, or whether it's coming from those spaces that were created ideas and identity to build this, this being. Mm -hmm. I have to make it personal. I have to go deep. And I have to bring that to the surface of everything, my anger, my pain, my fear, my desire, my drive, my intention, because uh, unless I'm doing that, then I'm missing something. And I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that you hired me because I refuse to miss something. That's right, that's right. And talk about your physicality because every character, Deborah has voiced a million amazing, you, there's no small role for you. Every character we give you, you just, it just becomes something much bigger. But one thing I love about you is you physically transform. You commit your body, I mean, sorry, you, come on, you commit your spirit and mind and your body to the character. That's a big thing. I see you physically shift. Talk about, because you've got to kind of feel her skin, right? I have to. Um, I, I have to disappear. It's what I call immersion. Mm -hmm. I have to be completely Im immersed in that experience because I'm not in a booth. Um, I, I don't exist anymore. Uh, the world has to be around me. And so even if I'm home in a booth or even if I'm in a studio, it has to disappear. Um, and it has to disappear because I'm focused on every relationship. I don't call it a relationship, every relationship. And in relating to everything, the environment, the temperature, what's below my feet. I'm grounding myself because I'm not wearing shoes, so I'll take my shoes off so that I can feel the expansion of what my orc feet would be on the ground, um, uh, 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 the air, am I seeing breath? Am I hearing things behind me? And the microphone disappears and that becomes the being that I'm talking to. So when I ask to do another take, it's because they responded differently. And I need to say this again to them because they shifted away. Their eyes changed. They looked down. They are paying attention. And so each time my intention begins to grow and layer because they did something different as I see them. So that's why when I uh, have a tendency with Andrea to, to, Andrea to do this, mm -hmm. because I notice they, they looked different. Mm -hmm. they, they, they had a different shift in their body. And when I recognize that shift, it helps to layer it. And at the same time, uh, as I'm doing voice, it helps to give you different choices as well. I love it. I, I mean, all of you, I feel like you so physically connect were you going to say something? Uh, yeah, and, and this is why it had to be Draka and it had to be Deborah because uh, when, when, you know, when we're dealing with 
this place Maldraxxus, this afterlife about contention and, and strife and proving yourself. We had a million characters we could draw from. There, there are any number from the, the past of World of Warcraft that we could have plugged into Maldraxxus and it would have been awesome, it would have been great. But Draka was important because her story is among the most human of stories. It is, like you were saying, it's a story of loss. It's about building yourself up, proving yourself up, and having it snatched away from you. And we all know what that is. We all have experienced that at points in our life. And Draka has a chance to take all of that and build a new future for herself and for this place. And so to be able to do that, you need a special actor to bring that to life. And that's Next what you have done so powers. masterfully. In Thank you. So powerfully. I, all of you, I mean, I really feel like all the casting we've done with our lead characters, all of you emulate our, our characters. So, so much of what our fans at home might love about these characters, you're actually loving the essence of these amazing humans on stage. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's just such a beautiful thing to behold. And we're so lucky to have you here. So we couldn't have a story about the afterlife without <laughs> our Loa of Death, who, Steve and I think we're personally both in love with Alex, aren't we? we oh, do talk, absolutely. We are so this completely guy. <laughs> in love. We have like, Alex, <laughs> no, Steve and I have shared like, I love Alex, no, I love him more, no, yeah. I love him more. Seriously, texting videos back Oh my more. God. Did you see this performance? <laughs> we love him so, yes. we love you so oh, much. Gosh. So let's see why we love you. A, you're so dapper and handsome, but let's oh. see your footage as well, because my we love you. My ears are red now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is a surprise. You're looking pretty good, your majesty. So, why have you come to see me? I need your aid. I see. <laughs> you want to make a deal with me. <laughs> go on, go on. Become my lord. Grant me the power to recover my kingdom, and I will elevate you above all lower. Yes, yes, so you get your kingdom back, all very nice. But soon you'll tire of old boy and Samdi. You go back to the living lower, the one who bring the rain, makes the crops grow, not wither and die. No, 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 I need more than just your word. Got so good. What the heck? You know, it's so hard. I had to choose a clip, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna choose like 10-second clips. I couldn't. For all of you, I'm like, no, 15, 20, 30. Okay, two minutes. I need two minutes of the footage. It's so good. Oh, thank I know you're on a panel before, but where does he come from? I feel like I'm watching um, a gangster flick every time he comes on screen. Well, first off, I'm saying I want to say that I'm very jealous of his gun. <laughs> oh. Gotta work on that. No, Buen Samdi. Actually, no. What I do love about Buen Samdi is that I get to tap into something I never get to do in my other acting right. career, is to be the mischievous, devilish, evil, but lovable yes. guy. Um, to me, is fascinating. Yes. Um, initially, I think I, had, I, I got the idea for what I wanted to do from watching an old movie called Rockers, this old Jamaican movie. And uh, there are some old Rastas in there. And the way everything them say is so deliberate. And then somehow when we got in the booth, we started playing with it and made them lighter and darker at the mm -hmm. same time. And I don't know how we caught it, but it was that thing where you go, there it is, let's go. Mm -hmm. um, and really, I, I'm, I say this in all sincerity, this is one of the joys of my life, is when I get to play. <sighs> We love him so much, and I think, Steve, you can attest, the fans are nuts over Buon Samdi. <laughs> and I think I talked about this on the last voice actor panel with you, but every time when Alex, when there was, when we record in session, Alex doesn't stand behind the mic and record, he kind of does this, like, dapper... Kind of got a lay Yeah, clean. he kind of just lingers on his music. Uh, yeah, totally. uh, <laughs> we have to keep moving the mic, because Alex just kind of lingers, and like, yeah. what do you want? Oh, my God. Well, it's he's, interesting, he's amazing. it's great hearing this, too, like what you were just talking about, and just how the physicality helps you. Absolutely. It helps you so much. And yeah, this cat's laid back, so come on, bring it. <laughs> so good. You know, um, so much fun. Yes. It's so what do you think he means when you, when you, so when you, when you create him, is it kind of tapping into those old Rasta and... Yeah. Started with the, yeah, Rasta and then, you know, Buen Samdi, and I was like, oh, Buen Samdi. Ah. Oh, we're going to Haiti. That's right. And, you know, okay, I've, I've heard about this stuff and so i was tapping into that yes jeffrey holder was also in my brain 
Um, but yeah, it was just tapping into that and, and the idea of the darkness, but also yes. not darkness, mischievous. Yes. And it's how mischievous can we get? How can we ride that line? Oh, I love it. Just get right there. Right there. And I just love being able to just <laughs> don't mess with me. <laughs> it's really. I think you're right. I think he really mean? is dark and light. And Steve, every time we're in session with you, Alex, we just laugh and laugh. Like there's, you just find these interesting peaks and valleys and deliveries, and it's just he takes these lines and suddenly it's like a whole other thing. I mean, <laughs> well, the, the the joy is that yes, we we know we knew going into the sessions for Shadowlands with Alex. Like we're so excited. We're like, oh, we can't wait to get yeah. Alex in the booth. It's going to be magical. But we, you never know when the magic is going to come because <laughs> you can you can write the lines, you can think a certain thing <laughs> right. and plan for it, and then he finds just something else, <laughs> and it's just delightful. And we collapse on the yeah. floor laughing. Do that again, do oh that my again. My, my favorite oh. is this. We'll do the line be like, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to try it this way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, and, and just through tears. Like, we're saying it through tears because we're laughing we so hard. It's like, did, did he yeah. did Alex? I know. It's amazing. Take it. We're like, I don't care if it's a totally different line. Take it. Yep. So right now, the line that Steve and I love most, can you just read the one on your card that's our most favorite? You know which one it is. Which one? The, the fussy, fussy, fussy. Fussy. Oh, hold on. I forgot my readers. For, uh, um, uh, um, 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 this is the line that when he did it, Steve and I are like, we don't care. We're changing yeah. the whole damn line. I do it. It's such a fussy, fussy punch, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got something here you're going to want to see. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, did he just say fussy, yeah. fussy pants? <laughs> <Right. laughs> <See? laughs> yes, he did. Print it. Fussy, yes. fussy. That's, the, that's the thing. Like, most of the time we go into a session, we got our script printed out, and occasionally, you know, sometimes things happen in the, in the booth, and you're like, oh, that's, let's make a change here. And it, but, you know, they're, they're not huge changes most of the time. But with Alex, it's like, we'll just throw some lines out there, <laughs> and I know they're just going to be rewritten on the fly. I've got yeah. the editor open. I'm in there just typing like crazy. I can't believe he said that oh let me throw that God. in there because it's just so much more delicious yes because it's it's just jamming for, together for alex in particular the script is just a suggestion yeah. here's a question thinking alex you do what you want to do and i thank you for oh that. my god and i love it and that's what i always say too you know it's nice when we as the devs come in and know what we want but we have to give space for draka for denathrius for, we give space to you because it's you you as a person your life story your ideas and your thoughts that you want to try that really bring it to life and Buon Samedi is like I could he's just so delicious I could listen to him all we need like an audio book Steve can we yeah. do Buon Samedi audio book I think that that would be amazing <laughs> yeah I think we got it it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be great or what if like just reading a user manual or something I could it doesn't matter <laughs> I'm with it well we love, love songs Buon, by yeah. Buon Samedi, oh, like was we love our Buon Samedi in the what fans. the world needs now is love sweet love oh, God, it's so good and I think I've seen a lot of romantic offers made to Buon Samedi on, on uh, Twitter as well. I don't know if you see this. I'm like, there's a whole lot of fan fiction going on in your area. So, uh, well done you. He's beloved. So, oh my God. I don't even know how to talk about Anduin. Let's watch some great Anduin footage because right. we're like sassy Anduin is all a go. So let's watch some Anduin footage all right, to celebrate right. your greatness, Josh. <laughs> uh, there she is again. You know, these endless lectures of yours have failed to convince you. Regardless, the conversation is over. One way or another, we will have you. So I will offer this one last time. Join our cause or be made to serve. What kind of choice is that? Why even give me? It's the choice you never had. Despite all your grand designs, there's still some shred of your mortality haunting you, as if the Banshee Queen hasn't entirely eclipsed the Ranger General. Don't. Now I understand why you brought me here, why you've tried so hard to persuade me. Because if you can get me to let go of hope, you finally can too. Enough! <laughs> Submit! You are only making this harder on yourself. Not harder on me. Right now, you hold all the power. How will you use it? I've not come this far to falter now. Then why do you hesitate? 
Make your choice. Sylvanas Windrunner. Kind of cut that. There's Ooh. no cup boy in there. Oh, so good. Yeah. You're all hangry in that video. Yeah. So pissy and what's going on? I mean, he's been in the mall for all this time and he's, you know, having to listen to Sylvanas wax yeah. poetic yeah, about yeah. everything and we were talking before the cameras went live about how he's just, we get to see Anduin, you know, he started off very formal and articulate, yes. and now he's just like, I'm over it. I'm yeah. over you, I'm over this, let's tangle. So what's your take on him now? Well, I mean, he's been through a lot. Yeah. He, he, he started out as, as the, the little kid that was, that was in Stormwind and, yeah. and, and got thrown into being a king. Yeah. Uh, I mean, losing his father in a horrible way and now being expected by everybody to to rule and lead the alliance, and and uh, and he's still kind of just a kid, yeah. and he's having to figure all this stuff out, and he's been through a lot of bad things. I mean, he's seen the home of his of his friends, the elves, completely burned to the ground by Sylvanas. Mm -hmm. um, he's had his own uh, military, um, uh, his own military strategies and and, uh, and and campaigns fail, and and have to you know see more and more of his of his countrymen die. Um, he, not, not everything has gone well for him. Um, and at the end of it all, he still kind of has this belief, this unshakable faith in the light that, that kind of really, really just lends to the optimism that he does have. And sometimes, I mean, it's, it's kind of shown itself in, in the past to be somewhat naive. And, and he's, he's having to deal with that. He's having to deal with the ramifications of these choices that he's made of perhaps trusting too much. Mm -hmm. And, and now we see that in here where he's, he's, uh, he's basically imprisoned and, and having to, to, find, to find that strength um, where, where he's, he's, still, he's still maintaining his faith in the light and, and, and having that belief and, and drawing so much strength from that. I mean, you could see at the end of that clip where yeah. he's, he's, his hands are open. I mean, his, his chest is exposed. Yeah. He's, he's offering himself up and he's saying, yeah, you're, he's, he's basically telling Sylvanas, you're going to step to me, then, then let's see you do bring it. it. Bring let's it. Bring it. Yeah. You know, he's finally, he's, 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 I mean, over the last couple expansions, he's, he's gone from Anduin to Manduin. Yes. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I mean, we, we really see it right yeah. there where, yeah. where he's, he's just, he's just done with her ish. Absolutely. Even in the beginning. Absolutely. In the beginning where he's just like, oh, my favorite thing, just like, oh, Jesus, you again. There she is again. <laughs> mm. So for you, what part of Josh do you think is an Anduin? Like, where do you think the two cross over? Well, I, I grew up as a child actor. Right. I had very strict parents. Um, I wasn't even allowed to watch like PG-13 movies. Like I was very sheltered. And so that, I would say that. I mean, Anduin also grew up in mm -hmm. a very sheltered life. And then when, when I finally got out on my own, when I finally kind of you know, cut the umbilical cord and moved out of the house and tried to have my own life, like life was there mm -hmm. and, and the world was there and I was vastly unprepared for it. And, and so I, I definitely feel a kinship in him with, with him in that sense, right. in the sense of, of now having the world thrust upon you and feeling completely unprepared, but mm -hmm. still having to rely on, on whatever optimism and, and hope that you have that you can make this work. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what my own personal past that I draw mm -hmm. from when I'm, when I'm voicing Anduin. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I've definitely you know, grown since then um, and, and grown into my own shoes, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of that. That's beautiful. I think there's a resilience there that we can all relate to because I think all of us think we're prepared for life and then we find out that we're not and we just have to keep going and life keeps throwing hard things and we just have to keep going. So I think we can all relate to that. Yeah. So you did him so beautifully. Um, Steve, any thoughts on the Anduin journey so far? Well, it's, uh, it's certainly a centerpiece of Shadowlands, yeah. this relationship between Anduin, Sylvanas, and how the Jailer, mm -hmm. his shadow, looms over that. Um, it's been a lot of fun. That, the cinematic that you chose uh, is probably, it's definitely one of my favorite cinematics we've ever done. Um, and Anduin is so great in that because you look at, at what's going on in there, Sylvanas is holding the sword to him, but Anduin has all the power in that scene. Right. Yeah. He's the one who's saying, he's putting it on her <clears throat> and, and backing her into the darkness mm -hmm. where he's standing mm -hmm. in that light. Um, these are all very deliberate that we've talked through this cinematic. Again, you know, we, uh, I work on these with, with lots of different folks, um, but Taryn Gregory and, and, and Christy Golden and I worked very closely on this one in particular. And uh, that was just that theme, that, that juxtaposition of power and who's got it in that scene uh, was, was just so crucial and so fun. And, and you and Patty just delivered that so beautifully. Uh, it was amazing. 
Well, I just love you all. And for all of you at home, I, I mean, I feel like you're all sitting here with your shoes off drinking tea with us. But <laughs> all these actors, I mean, I feel like we have like about an hour today and it's just not enough. I want more time because there's so much to talk about. You know, our live stories, how they, they come to it and the craft and all that. Um, Maybe someday at BlizzCon, if we can all force them to give me a five-hour panel or an eight-hour panel, I think that would be great because wow. I can feel it. There's just a I sleep like a sleepover. Panel. Yeah, yeah. There you go. BlizzCon a slumber party. party. BlizzCon Let's slumber party. Down. Yeah. Oh my God. I've been living in pajamas all year. Let's do it. A BlizzCon <laughs> slumber party with like snuggies yeah. and snacks would be great. Well, we've got a little bit of time left. What I want to do now is I want all of us to be. Everybody's got cards with some of their lines on it. So I want you to, to go around. We're going to read your lines. And then we're going to be bananas, and we're going to switch cards. Oh. And be so silly. <laughs> so just read a couple lines to start, and then we're going to switch it up, and then we're going to give some words of love to everybody before we go, and then we're just going to peace out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know. Deborah, go. Any line? Or any, any line. Just choose whatever you want to do. A couple, like three or four lines. I am Draka, once of the Frost Wolf Clan, now Baroness of the House of the Chosen. <laughs> and most of all, Protector of Maldraxxus. Step forward, mortal, and raise your rune blade. The House of the Chosen stands with you. Oh, what's this? I just want Deborah to read the rest of you. I don't care about right now. It's going to be Deborah. Wonderful. I'm really paying attention because I don't know if I have to play her next time. Well, now you said it. Now you just said it. Now you just said it. Let's hear you. Let's hear our lovely Sergeant Athrius. It's funny how sassy he is. I oh, love. Yes. I love him. Um, Restrain yourself, Ramonia. This is Revendreth. We do not butcher. We educate. <laughs> how exhaustingly predictable. But then I suppose failure comes naturally to your kind. Defy Revendreth. I am Revendreth. <laughs> we can what pay, are you? We wow. can pay to do this. This yeah. is bananas. This is bananas. Uh, you pay me to do this. Sorry, I pay you to do this. I love it. I just never so lucky. Aralon, let's hear it. Sure. Uh, I shall protect these souls through their winter. I shall see them reborn in their spring. No matter what trial I face, I swear it, my queen. I swear it. Anyone who threatens my grove is my enemy. For Arden Weald. I love it no. so much. Wow. All right. Stop. I will not become an instrument of death. Everyone suffers, Sylvanas, but destroying everything will not take away the pain. Do you expect me to believe that all this time you've been fighting for justice? Look around you at what and who you've joined. What makes you believe you're not just a weapon to achieve his ends? I thought you believed in free will, Sylvanas. God, this all day, all day. Oh, my God. Oh. Wow. All right, all right, Bonsamdi. Hey, well, you see, Ice Queen, it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but this tree looking good. Yeah, I like what you've done with the place. <laughs> you better watch your tongue, little thing. Bonsamdi, the boss man now. Another D, another D. <laughs> so, the best part is watching your faces because your faces change. Okay, give me your cards. Oh, I want to mix no. them up. Give me oh, your cards. Oh, sweet oh, mother. No. Oh, oh, boy. What are you doing? And we're going to, okay, give me your okay. cards. All I got is one. So. Give me your cards. <laughs> That's all I right. know. Okay. You got to well, do that. I cannot okay. do that actually. What if I get the same so, one? Okay. Got Don't okay. tell me if you pick the same one. Okay. Did you just read it? Okay, here we go. Yeah. Character. Okay. I think that would be great. I think. I'm. I'm don't tell anybody what you got. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know who got one zombie. No. <laughs> do the other lines as one zombie? No, as the character you just heard. Oh no! Oh, you can do it either. Oh, whatever, however, however you want to do it. Do it. I'll let, actress choice. <laughs> <laughs> actress choice. <laughs> <laughs> you All right. Fathers. Okay. Uh, who wants to go first? <sighs> Who's ready? Who's actors? I'll go. Okay, I'll go. go ahead, Ray. Here's the character uh, Anduin Rim, <laughs> Warcraft, uh, originated um, uh, by uh, Josh Keaton, but now it's played by me. <laughs> <laughs> I will not become an instrument of death. That's pretty damn good. Everyone suffers, Sylvanas, 
but destroying everything will not take away the pain. I thought you believed in free will, Sylvanas. Good Ooh. job. Yeah, that was pretty good. Maybe Denathrius is a long lost brother. It kind of yeah. sounds like You know? Uh, 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 no spoiler. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Who's ready next? Okay, Alex. I am Draka. <laughs> Once of the Frostwolf clan, now Baroness of the House of the Chosen, and most of all, a protector of Maldraxxus. But then, <laughs> the House of the Chosen stands with you. For <laughs> <laughs> Greg is for Akari! Oh <laughs> ah. yes. All right, who is next? Josh, I guess it's me. This, I got I got Sire Denathrius. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's hear it. How fortunate you are to witness the splendor of what is about to unfold. Every precious drop of anima, so painstakingly wrung from the tortured souls of lesser beings, now paves the path for the banished one to reclaim what was his. Defy Revendreth! I am Revendreth. <laughs> oh, good. I think we should recast the whole no, game. No, no, yeah. no. Recast. Well, that means. <sighs> Let's hear what you got. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was so hoping Let's I didn't hear what it. you got. Look, don't let us. Don't mess it up now, Max. No, you got to no, be perfect. What I love is that it's the way the accent is. It's written in for okay. me. I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to sound very authentic. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I can do this, right? Okay, yes, yeah, okay. totally. Okay. Right. Totally. Uh, totally. Uh, totally. Ahem. One somebody got off the Zondalari praising me. Without the jailer, you'd just be a poor forgotten hour. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Great, man. Okay, maybe we won't recast all the kids. <laughs> okay. That was great. We can make a background troll. That's fine. That's oh my god. I love just clap. I love you guys. Is everybody at home let's clap for our actors. I love you guys. Oh, did you win? Did you go? Endeavors oh my god, I got so excited oh. by your Bon Somni. I got so excited. Because that's what, how we should have ended it. Actually. I'm so sorry, Deborah. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. My name is Deborah. I know. Sorry, you I are. Max? Yeah. I'm Max Middleman. <laughs> you this? I shall protect these souls through their winter. I shall see them reborn in their spring. No matter what trial I face, I swear it, my queen. I swear it. Anyone who threatens my grove is my enemy. I will hunt for you, my queen, for Ardenweald, and for the souls we can yet save. Yeah. Oh my God, that's the way we were supposed Come to on. end hey, it. Hey, I just have to say real quick, I uh, I grew up watching Deborah on TV. <laughs> and she's so saying that is, that is like uh, such a huge honor for you to be doing my character <laughs> in front of me. It's that blows my so mind. Awesome. Thank you. Oh yeah. my God, that was perfect. You guys are amazing. This just shows the versatility awesome. as well. I mean, maybe you could work on the accent a little bit. That's <laughs> Everybody awesome. else was amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. I got to work on my dwarf. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. <laughs> well, we are basically almost out of time. So what I want to do is close with just, you know, a reminder to our fans. We'll go around quickly and just our parting words to all of us out there. Mm. Um, you guys can start. Um, Steve, I don't know who wants to start. I love you all. Uh, Alex, you ready to start? Just a, yeah. a, a parting farewell to our lovely tribe. Uh, so grateful to be here. So grateful that you're here. And just remember, be good to you and be good to those around you. Everything else will come together. Amen. Beautifully said. Steve? Thanks for being part of BlizzCon Line. Uh, can't wait to be back with you in person again and share this magic, this energy. It will happen. Stay strong. Yes. Thank you for being with us on this panel. Thank you for playing Shadowlands and, uh, and World of Warcraft. And when things seem the darkest, mm -hmm. the light is always with you. Oh my god. I don't know much. Uh, I will say, um, my grandma always told me, she, she had this phrase, this too shall pass. Yes. And uh, I know that uh, even in the darkest of times, uh, we will get through it, we'll get through it together. It's, it's easy to lose sight of what we do have, so stay grateful, um, and that's how we can pull through. Yes, beautifully said. Uh, hang in there, you guys. Uh, keep playing World of Warcraft. Uh, it's a great way to get through this, and uh, especially thank you to Blizzard for letting me take home that wonderful piece of art. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's 
so kind of them. Oh, yeah. oh, so thank gorgeous. you, Blizzard. Really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, I always love to say this to people, and I mean it when I say it every single time. There isn't a time when it doesn't mean something to me, so I really hope it means something to you. Be blessed, be well, be happy, be healthy, but most importantly, be you. Because you are be you, Tiffo. Oh, God, I love you guys. And I'm just going to say, I love you so much. Thank you for joining our World of Warcraft voice actor panel. We love you. We did it for you. And you're gonna, we're all going to be OK. Take care. Till next time, be well. Bye. 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 It's like Zoom. <laughs> is it on mute? <laughs> so is it cut? Is there a cut? And then it just ends. Is there, is there, can we get like some? No. No, it's like a news broadcast. We have to talk to yeah, each oh, other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's like, don't like, like, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I totally. Hands together. And we're out.